Well guys, welcome to this video on fats. It's one of the key macronutrients that we need in our diet. In this video, we're going to talk about energy density just briefly. We're going to think a little bit about the role of fats and oils in our diet. We're going to think a little bit about sort of the chemistry of fats and how that relates to why we should and shouldn't eat different kinds of fats. And then we'll talk about what foods we mean when we say fatty food. Let's get started. Let's begin with a quick recap on what the macronutrients actually are. There's three macronutrients in our diet and macronutrients are simply those parts of the diet that we need to consume in large quantities. So we have carbohydrates, we have lipids and we have proteins. And now from the perspective of the providing of energy in our diet, each of these macronutrients has a different energy density. Now energy density is simply a measure of how much energy there is in a single gram of each of these nutrients. So carbohydrates would provide us with approximately four calories per gram. Lipids or fats would provide us with nine calories per gram and proteins similar to carbs, four calories per gram. Now at this point I need to be slightly more precise with my language here because as you can see on the screen we're talking about carbohydrates, lipids and proteins and so far I've used the term lipids interchangeably with the term fats. Now strictly speaking although that is generally the done thing that is actually incorrect. Fats are in fact a subcategory of lipids. There are eight different categories of lipids and what we've got on the screen and what we're going to be talking about in this session is fats and oils. Now fats and oils are um, amongst those eight categories. Fats and oils are in fact what we refer to as triglycerides. triglycerides. So um, there are many other categories of lipid but these two are the main groups of triglycerides. So we have fats and we have oils. So from this point on I'm mostly going to refer to fats and oils and their subcategories of lipids. Let's think about the role of fats and oils in the diet. So the first role amongst many is that fats and oils are obviously because they're very energy dense. We've already said that there's nine calories per gram of energy in, in fat and in oil. Therefore, it's a really um, good source of energy if we need a lot of energy from our food. Secondly, it provides essential fatty acids. Now the essential fatty acids are those fatty acids that the body can't make itself. And so therefore we have to consume them. And so the, you, may, you may have heard of fatty acids such as omega-6, omega-3 and so on. Those are essential fatty acids. We must consume them. And we get those from uh, foods such as fish, for example. Um, thirdly, we've got increases satiety. So another really uh, beneficial feature of fats and oils is they keep us full for longer. So it may be helpful to have some fats and oils in the diet that are going to keep us full for a little bit longer. What else do they do? They help absorb some vitamins, uh, particularly in this case, vitamins A, D, E and K. And the reason for that is that those vitamins are what we know as fat soluble vitamins. Some vitamins can dissolve in water, other vitamins can only dissolve in fat. So vitamins A, D, E and K only really dissolve in fat and so in order to transport them around the body we need to have fat in the system, we need to have fat in our diet so that we can absorb those vitamins and move them to where they're needed. Fats and oils also help in terms of cell membrane structure. So the outer membrane of cells is essentially made up of fats um, of, of different kinds, phospholipids technically speaking, but are constructed from the fats and oils that we consume. Next then we've got neuron insulation and impulse transmission. So in the central nervous system, fats actually line and insulate uh, the neurons that send information around the body uh, and without that fat that insulation wouldn't be there, um, messaging would be weaker, impulse transmission wouldn't happen as effectively. So these fats that surround uh, the neurons as they pass the information, the electrical impulses along their, along their length, these fats are really essential. Um, and one of the things obviously that's important in terms of uh, neuron insulation therefore is mood regulation. 
So if we don't have um, sufficient fats and oils in our, in our diet, we're going to see impacts in terms of sports performance, but we'll also see impacts in things like mood regulation. Related to that, of course, um, we have hormone production and regulation. So fats and oils are absolutely essential um, in producing hormones or at the very least through signaling, producing signaling chemicals that, are, that come initially from fats. Fat also protects our organs. Um, and so you might say that's just kind of cushioning. What we're talking about is cushioning. And so that's visceral fat, the fat that surrounds our uh, kidneys, for example, and other, uh, other organs protects those organs to some extent. And that's, that's known as visceral fat. It's kind of deep within the tissue. We also have, of course, fat that's stored underneath the skin and that provides whole body insulation. And we know fat that's stored underneath the skin is referred to as subcutaneous fat. So we have got this visceral fat that protects our organs. And we've also got this subcutaneous fat that provides whole body insulation. And then finally, I mean, there's loads we could talk about. But finally, let's let's just include this one. Uh, reproductive health. And this is true for both women and for men. Um, and mainly the, the impact of fats and oils on reproductive health is a consequence of the role of fats and oils in effective hormone production and hormone regulation. Hormones like leptin, for example, hormones like testosterone and so on, have a big impact on, um, on fertility for both men and women in, in different, in different um, amounts, different degrees. Right, let's get into the chemistry a little bit. So we'll dig a little bit deeper now. Um, the chemical structure um, dictates the chemical properties of these different triglycerides. So we're still talking about lipids. The subcategory of lipids we're focusing on in this lesson is triglycerides. And triglycerides can be subdivided um, into fats and oils. And hopefully it will be much clearer in just a moment as to what constitutes a fat and what constitutes an oil, what the difference between those two things are from a chemical point of view. So a triglyceride, fats and oils are both triglycerides, a triglyceride is called a triglyceride because it's a glycerol backbone with three, tri, one, two, three, fatty acid chains, hydrocarbon chains attached to that glycerol backbone. Now, each of those hydrocarbon chains, as the name suggests, is made up of hydrogen and carbon. Now, as far as the structure of fats and oils goes, the number of double bonds in that chain is going to determine the properties of that fat. So we're going to start off by talking about the structure. The chemical structure determines several features of the lipid. And that's true of all lipids and it's true of these two uh, kinds of triglyceride here. The chemical structure determines several features of the lipid. So if we have... Um, the triglyceride and, and the, the chains, the hydrocarbon chains off the, off the glycerol backbone, if they include no double bonds between the carbon atoms, then we call those fats. If there are some double bonds, then that triglyceride is now an oil. So very simply, this is the key distinction between a fat and an oil. They're both triglycerides. It just depends on in the in the fatty acid attached, the hydrocarbon chain attached to the glycerol backbone. It depends on if there's any double bonds in there or not. If there are no double bonds, what that means is all of the carbon atoms are taken up with as many hydrogens as it's possible to get in there from a chemical perspective, from a chemistry perspective. It's got as many hydrogen atoms in there as can be put in there then it's a fat because it's got no double bonds an oil may have one or more double bonds and so this helps us with our next um our next concept which is the concept of saturation so you'll have heard before of saturated and unsaturated fats now saturation simply means how close the carbon chain so that hydrocarbon chain that's coming off those, those three fatty acid chains coming off that glycerol backbone. 
if those carbon chains are fully occupied by hydrogen atoms, then we say that it is saturated because we can't get any more hydrogen atoms in. It's saturated. It's full. It's full of hydrogen. We can't get any more in. It's saturated. So a fat, as we can see, has no double bonds. That means there's no bonds that can be broken in order to add hydrogens in. We can't get any more hydrogens in if there's no double bonds. It's already maxed out. It's already fully occupied. So we refer to fats as being saturated fats because we can't get any more hydrogen atoms in there. Oils, on the other hand, that depends on how many double bonds there are because if there is room for more hydrogen because there's one double bond we could get an extra hydrogen atom in there if we broke that double bond we call that a mono unsaturated fat a mono unsaturated fat if there's more than one double bond then that's what we refer to as a poly unsaturated fat now natural mono unsaturated and natural poly unsaturated fats the structure of the fatty acid the structure of that hydrocarbon chain will have a little kink in it saturated fats because the carbon atoms are fully um, occupied with hydrogen they will be straight in a straight line so their structure physically that you could or chemically you can go and have a look if you zoom down close enough there'll be a nice straight structure monounsaturated fats have a little kink in them polyunsaturated fats have multiple kinks in them because of those double bonds next then we've got what the consequence of this saturation or unsaturation has on the look or the state of the fat at room temperature so at room temperature different triglycerides have different states at room temperature so because the saturated fat has no double bonds the chemical structure is nice and straight it allows therefore multiple of those um, triglycerides to be layered upon one another and form a solid so saturated fats form solids at room temperature whereas monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats form liquids at room temperature and this again it's all down to the structure the chemical structure of these different triglycerides both still triglycerides but some have got kinks in and that makes them oils makes them liquid at room temperature some are straight lines straight lines of hydrocarbons that makes them solid at room temperature so there's one more thing to cover here and that is this concept of hydrogenation so hydrogenation is very simply a chemical process it's usually done via heating it's a chemical process of adding hydrogen to the triglyceride to change its properties so we're going to add hydrogen to the triglyceride to change its properties now if you've been following me you'll know already that a saturated fat as we've got here on the left hand column is already full it's already saturated with hydrogen we can't get any more hydrogen in to a saturated fat so therefore by heating it we cannot add any more hydrogen atoms to each of those hydrocarbon chains they're already full but for oils and this is why they're liquid at room temperature because they're unsaturated either mono unsaturated or poly unsaturated there is the opportunity when we heat them to break some of those carbon double bonds to break them so we can then add more hydrogen in so that is what we that is what we refer to as hydrogenation it's the adding of hydrogen to the triglyceride so fats and let me be uh, clear what I mean by that I mean saturated fats saturated fats cannot be hydrogenated oils however whether they're monounsaturated or polyunsaturated can be fully or partially hydrogenated so doing this to um, polyunsaturated fats or polyunsaturated oils produces something known as trans fats which when they're artificially produced as they are in, in processed food often they can be very damaging to health and there's all sorts of health problems associated with overconsumption of artificial trans fats one of which is the increase in uh, LDL cholesterol and the decrease in positive in the good cholesterol the HDL cholesterol and the knock-on impact to heart disease so um, 
this the reason for some oils to be partially hydrogenated is it gives them a longer shelf life it makes them last longer on the shelf so uh, manufacturers can have things in packets on the shelf for longer and it gives them a benefit in terms of their sales but it's problematic in terms of the health of the person that's eating it so some countries have actually banned trans fats some states in the US have, have banned or are on the way to banning them the UK has not yet banned them um, it's kind of relying on the food companies to figure this out for themselves um, but generally speaking it's it's agreed that trans fats from processed foods are a very bad thing to be consuming okay let's finish off by talking about where we'd find these lipids in our food so remember lipids is the general term there's eight different kinds of lipids one of which is triglycerides and there's two types of triglycerides so those are fats which are solid at room temperature because they're saturated and oils which are liquid at room temperature because they are unsaturated so in our food we would find saturated fats in butter and lard dripping ghee suet obviously in in different cuts of fatty meat cream pate baked goods like biscuits and cakes also in chocolate um, incidentally not only would you find saturated fats in biscuits and cakes you'd also find a fairly large proportion of trans fats as well um, as a consequence of the cooking process um, then if we move to oils we've got monounsaturated oils so those would be oils like olive oil rapeseed oil corn oil peanut butter um, which technically just about is a liquid at room temperature uh, peanut oil um, so those are monounsaturated triglycerides therefore they're liquid at room temperature so we refer to them as oils and then those polyunsaturated um, triglycerides also obviously oils because they're unsaturated would include things like soft margarine or margarine depending on where you are in the world sunflower oil soya oil and then the oil that we get from oily fish that includes things like omega-3 and omega-6 which are those essential fatty acids that we mentioned at the beginning of the video so that's it for this video we've thought about the energy density of fats and figured out that they are the most energy dense of the three macronutrients that we consume in our diet we talked about the role of fats and oils in the diet why we even eat them in the first place we thought a little bit then about the chemical structure and how the chemical structure impacts the properties of the different kinds of uh, fats and oils and we finished up talking about uh, where we'd find these fats in our diet I hope the video has been helpful for you if it has please do like it um, it's also really helpful to me if you can subscribe and hit the notification icon you'll obviously get notified every time I upload similar stuff um, if you've got any questions queries or comments please put them in the comments section I do try and get back to as many of you as I possibly can uh, other than that take care for now see you in the next video